Hello. Welcome to worship at San Ramon Valley United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Andrew Davis, along with Pastor Kim Reisdorf and all of us leading worship. We're glad that you're here, whether you're here in the sanctuary, whether you're joining us online. We're always glad to have you present in God's company and in each other's company, no matter what space we're in. This is one of the highlights of the week, as we get to step out of the world, we get to simply be we get to sit back, take a deep breath, and re-energize ourselves for the week ahead. And so as we settle in for worship, I invite us to take a deep breath and exhale. And let us join in singing our opening hymn, O God, Our Help in Ages Past. One of the things I love about the season of Lent is that it allows us to touch on some of the heavier topics of faith in a safe and caring space. Our scripture this week touches on sufferings and afflictions as the Apostle Paul addresses the human condition. In the first few chapters of the letter to Romans, there does not seem to be a whole lot of hope for humanity. Yet by the chapter we hear this week, Paul changes his tone to that of hope and that of encouragement. Despite suffering trials and afflictions, Paul begins to encourage everyone to look for hope amidst suffering and affliction. Let us hear these words from the apostle that Priscilla will read for us. Here today, today's scripture reading from the book of Romans. Since we have been acquitted and made right through faith, we are able to experience true and lasting peace with God through our Lord Jesus, the anointed one, the liberating king. Jesus leads us into a place of radical grace where, where we are able to celebrate the hope of experiencing God's glory. And that's not all we also celebrate in seasons of suffering because we know that when we suffer, we develop endurance, which shapes our characters. And when our characters are refined, we learn what it means to hope and anticipate God's goodness. And hope will never fail to satisfy our deepest need because the Holy Spirit that was given to us has flooded our hearts with God's love. When the time was right, the anointed one died 
for all of us who were far from God, powerless and weak. Now it is rare to find someone willing to die for an upright person, although it's possible that someone may give up his life for one who is truly good. But think about this. While we were wasting our lives in sin, God revealed his powerful love to us in a tangible display. The anointed one died for us. As a result, the blood of Jesus had, has made us right with God now, and certainly we will be rescued by him from God's wrath in the future. If we were in the heat of combat with God when his, gun, when his son reconciled us by laying down his life, then how much more will we be saved by Jesus' resurrection life? In fact, we stand now reconciled and at peace with God. That's why we celebrate in God through our Lord Jesus, the anointed. May we gear, hear God's word in this lesson. Let us join in a moment of prayer. Most holy and loving God, may your Holy Spirit work through us today as we hear this message. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. During the season of Lent, which we're in the third week of, we've been using Kate Bowler and Jessica Ritchie's The Lives We Actually Have as a daily reflection. And today, as I was getting ready, one of these reflections this last week really caught my attention. And so I wish to share with you for this garbage day. I can find no good in today and I don't want to try. It feels like a lie to sugarcoat reality instead of naming it what is. When there is much to grieve, too many losses and disappointments to name, too many things going wrong when I'm better off climbing back under the covers and trying again tomorrow. Blessed are we, the Debbie Downers and negative Neds, who come to you just as we are, with our loneliness and loss, our scarcity and sorrow, and say, God, there is just not enough. Not enough money to pay bills, not enough jobs or safety for those who have them, not enough wisdom to find solutions, not enough strength or comfort or connection, not enough patience to deal with these people. Things are hard today. Perhaps it is too much to say, God, thank you for today, because today is already topped with frustrations and bad attitudes and unhope. So instead, may there also be a blessing for those of us who say, God, could you come meet me here on this garbage day? Give me a microscope to notice the tiny, tiny graces, the smell before rain, the softness of my pet's fur, the way my friend gives the best hugs, or that my favorite show always cheers me up. So when gratitude feels impossible, may I learn to compress my attention so narrow as to find the smallest hopes, not as a formula to quiet the wrongs, but as a practice of finding any crumbs of joy now visible on the kitchen floor. Let's face it, we all have those garbage days. Every so often, we will have garbage weeks, garbage months, maybe even a garbage year. There are times where it feels that absolutely nothing can go right and we find ourselves frustrated, suffering, facing afflictions, or trials. 
On top of that, add the constant political battles that we see in the news, people dying from violence and disease, wars, poverty, or natural disaster on a daily basis around us and in our world. Any time that we are faced with any of this, it makes us wonder, where is hope? When we began the season of Lent a few weeks ago, we set out on a journey with Jesus as it began in the wilderness. During that time in the wilderness, Jesus suffered from extreme hunger and thirst as he went without food or water for 40 days. And as Jesus journeys to the cross, he knows that he will suffer trials, betrayal, and death. While Jesus has the power to resist all of these, he doesn't resist it. Instead, he embraces the suffering. He embraces the suffering both in the wilderness and that he'll face on the cross. Because suffering is not going to have the final answer. While suffering will happen in our lives, many of us would rather sweep it under the rug or avoid it altogether. As Kate Bowler and Jessica Ritchie explained from our study, the Lent we actually have, when we are faced with suffering, we often react by fighting our way out, overworking, solving our own problems, self-advocacy, or burying our heads in the sand of denial, saying, I'm fine, you're fine, we're all fine, just grin and bear it. But Romans 5, 1 through 11, tells us that those are not the only two reactions. Paul writes that we can boast in our sufferings. A better way to translate boast in this text is the word confidence. We can have confidence in our suffering. But how? Well, as we look back to verses 3 and 4, Paul says that when we suffer, we develop endurance, which shapes our characters. When our characters are refined, we learn what it means to hope and anticipate God's goodness. Paul is offering a word of encouragement to hold on to hope and to look for God's goodness, even when things are painful or not going right. In other words, don't sweep it under the rug. Sit with it. Feel it. We can still seek out hope, even when it's in tension with suffering or affliction. These last few years have proven to be a test of our endurance. And yet we can still see signs of hope amidst the chaos and the affliction and suffering and trials. When we look at the latest COVID numbers, we notice that there hasn't been as big of a surge in recent months, although we still act with caution. When we step outside and look around us, we see the trees and flowers beginning to blossom, despite still feeling like winter. Whenever we're out driving, whether it's on 680 or even here in town and we look around us and we can see the lush green carpet on the hills in Mount Diablo, it's another sign of new life. And although the Sierra is getting an abundant snowfall this year, along with facing the danger of structural damage due to all the snow on the roofs and people growing wary of shoveling and plowing, we're looking at a good water year for California, considering how we've been prone to drought. After all, we did pray for rain. All of these signs of hope and new life bring to mind one of the verses from Natalie Sleeth's Hymn of Promise that says, In the cold and snow of winter, 
There's a spring that waits to be, unrevealed until God's season, something God alone can see. It's when we look for hope despite suffering that we can anticipate God's goodness. While we are encouraged to look for that goodness and know that we are not alone in our suffering, it doesn't mean that suffering is going to go away. God is still with us. God is with us in everything. Plus, this is where the community of faith can be present for each other, especially when we look over and care for each other. According to New Testament professor Israel Kamudzandu, Paul shapes our humanity under the gracious and outpouring love of God, through which we are all saved. A reorientation of Christian and spiritual priorities is called for in Romans 5, and to welcome human suffering and trust in the outpouring of God's love on the cross as the center of human life. In essence, the Lenten journey is about sitting with the more difficult times, suffering, trials, and afflictions. The good news is that despite all of these, we can embrace the love of God that is expressed through Jesus and through the community of faith. We can embrace that love and hope, even when we have a garbage day, week, month, or year. Despite such moments in life, there is that hope of new life, peace, joy, and reconciliation before us as we continue this journey towards Easter. As we hear the carillon bells play, Think about when you have found hope despite moments of chaos. And I encourage you today and this week to ponder the question, how has your faith been shaped through times of struggle and in difficult times? Amen.
something about the bell music with the piano that's so evocative and calls us to practice hope, to practice wonder and beauty. We've heard a message about how to live with hope regardless of the situation around us, and the next portions of worship suggest that we don't wait to feel hope before we act. I'm going to present some options to act and develop that muscle of hope. One is in our giving, the way we give uh, with volunteer time, the way we give with our financial resources, bring hope to the world, and I'm grateful for the way this community does that. One of the ways your giving makes a difference is in taking care of our beautiful campus. And today our campus needs a little extra TLC, a little. Um, if you're worshiping here in person, you've noticed that downed tree that happened during um, the storms earlier this week, and, uh, some collateral damage around that. And you have a slide of that too if you're worshiping with us online. So one of the ways, uh, we, your, the resources that we receive is to maintain a beautiful campus so that the community groups and we ourselves who are on campus can be aware of hope and goodness because we have this beautiful campus that reminds us there is peace, there is hope, there is community. So your giving goes towards, towards that in part, and there are numerous ways to give. If you're here with us in person, as you leave uh, this, uh, this sanctuary, you'll notice there are some offering plates and you can always give with, through the QR code online or by visiting our website. Both lead to the giving page. And giving is a powerful act of hope. And it also fills us with joy. So for all of that, thank you. Let us continue with music.
even in difficult times, we remember that God has done great things for us. We choose to live our lives in hope, counting on the goodness of God in every age. As a sign of trust in God, we share our gifts this morning, strengthening the ministry of this church as we see together to extend hope and summon peace. In God's name we pray. Amen. One of the ways we practice hope is through prayer. Prayer is simply the act of turning our whole heart's attention towards the presence of God, divine love. And we start with a prayer of thanksgiving, a prayer of thanksgiving for this community from my husband and I. Uh, my husband, Steve Elliott, had a, heart valve, a scheduled heart valve replacement to address an issue he's had since birth. And he's home and recovering. And his in-house nurse is um, doing the best she can as well. <laughs> but it's your prayers and your care that we have strengthened and held us. I can't thank you enough for the ways you have cared for us. We cherish, we cherish this community. We offer prayers for Pam and Steve Brown as well, as Pam is being considered for a liver transplant if she is healthy enough to receive one, and they're waiting to hear the final word on that. So it's an intense, chaotic time. We pray for hope, we pray for peace, we pray for guidance. Please send cards and prayers to Steve Brown and include Pam in that as well as we um, go through the week ahead. We surround Jason Roy, who is Tom and Laura's adult son, as he continues a rather arduous journey with long COVID. The treatments for migraines have not been successful, and we pray for hope, for healing, for well-being. Pastor Deborah Brady served here just about 20 years ago, and she asked for our prayers as well as her husband, Steve Valia, moved into a, a memory care unit about two weeks ago. Prayers as they both adjust and as Deborah grieves. Faithful God, hear our prayers. You can contact the church office to send a card or message to Deborah. That would help a lot. We have another former pastor who served here, Heather Hammer, who um, her, mom, her mom, Paula, who was 104, passed on yesterday. And while that wasn't unexpected, I don't think our hearts are ever ready to lose someone that we love and has been such a continuing presence in our lives. So please keep Heather and her family in your prayers as well. And again, cards and messages make all the difference, and you're so good at that, so keep doing it. And today we also pray for our Director of Music Ministry, Rosalind Neitinger. She handed in her letter of resignation this week, and I want to tell you a little bit more about that. One of the wonderful things about Rosalind is she gives her whole self. She gives wholeheartedly to whatever she's doing, which includes a full-time job in music at Monta Vista High School, working with the Danville Chorus, and her work here as well. And it's beginning to take a toll on her physical and um, mental well-being. So she made a courageous decision to step back from her ministry here. Her letter of resignation read more like a thank you note to you all, to the choir, to the living water musicians, to all the people that help make worship happen. She's so grateful for this opportunity she had and for, especially for the opportunity to pursue her relationship with God through music. Rosalind has enriched us beyond measure. She started here about two years ago when we were just emerging from the pandemic, and she brought back the choir and living water live music, and we are so grateful for that. We'll have a chance to send her off with our appreciation, but I'm just going to sneak in one more thank you to Rosalind. One of the ways she enriched us, we meet as a worship team every week to evaluate the worship service we just had and to plan ahead for that to come. And what I loved about Rosalind is she just didn't focus on the music. She would go back through a worship service and make extensive notes about all aspects of the worship service. I learned so much from her care for the quality of worship that we could offer in person and online. And I'm grateful to have been in ministry with her together. She will continue through Easter 
and this is the plan going forward. Your new lead pastor, who starts on July 1st, really wants to be involved in envisioning and supporting the music ministry, so a final decision will not be made immediately. Your staff parish relations committee will begin the search, and Pastor Sam will be part of that final decision. Ravslin, as I said, will lead through Easter, and then Pastor Andrew Davis, who has extensive uh, experience in directing choirs and musical groups, will step in as interim director through the first week in June when we move to our summer schedule. So thank you. Thank you for stepping into that leadership role. We have much to be thankful for and much to hold in prayer. So I'll lead us in a pastoral prayer, and then together we'll say the Lord's Prayer. And as we do that, I invite you to say those familiar words, knowing that something new, something of hope, can spring out of the ancient words for this time, for this moment. With that expectation, with that hope, let us pray. Holy One, our God, we turn to you, and you are there. Thank you. We turn to you in the midst of change when we seek healing, when we yearn for freedom from addiction and relapse and pain, when we are overwhelmed, when we cry, help me, you do. You send a community that cares. You send kind words. You send a rainbow in the sky to remind us of your eternal presence. You send moments of peace. You give us strength. You give us hope one moment at a time. So with hearts yearning for you, we turn towards you and pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As we take what we heard in worship and bring it into our lives, we have an opportunity to engage in ways that bless and serve others. And we have three options, and they're all winners. Envelope, please. We are ready to, um, to move forward from worship and engage in service. One is, are you looking for a way to get a yummy meal, a talent show, and support an important cause? Next Saturday, thanks. Next Saturday, March 18th at 5 p.m., in uh, Wesley, there will be a youth-sponsored spaghetti dinner followed by a talent show, and the proceeds go to support the service opportunities available to our youth. You can sign up if you're here in person by going to Wesley uh, Hall after, after worship, or you can sign up if you go to our website. You can just click on the widget that talks about the spaghetti dinner and sign up and register there. We want to make sure there's enough sauce for all the spaghetti. So let us know if you're planning, you're planning to come. 
our youth or our children are also engaged in a mission project. It's called the Crayon Initiative. And the idea behind that is if we get used crayons that would land in the landfill and melt them down, they can kind of be reformatted for a hospital and other situations so that children that need a, a larger instrument to hold on to as they draw can, can have that. So it's kind of a, a win-win. So used crayons are what are needed. They can be dropped off here at church or, again, in Wesley Center. If you are worshiping with us online, you can find a local chapter of the Crayon Initiative and do the same. If you do that, take pictures, and we'll celebrate that with you. And today, after worship, both online and in person, we continue with an adult education class called Great Decisions. And the topic today will be economic warfare, which acknowledges that the war in Ukraine has reworked a lot of our economic systems. And what can we, as people of faith, learn to do or learn about in that situation? So again, that will be in person. If you're here in the fireside room, if you go to our website, San Ramon Valley United Methodist Church org, you can also join us through Zoom. It's a time to be in community and put our faith to practice. So with all that as an option, we now stand or sit, tap your toes, however you want to join in the final hymn, God of Grace, God of Glory. Let us sing. and God of glory, on thy people pour thy power, crown thine ancient church's story, bring her born to glorious flower, grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this all. As we go out, let us go out with hope. Let us go out anticipating God's goodness. And let us go out to bring more hope into the world. Today, throughout the service, we have had a hidden word of hope in many of our slides and hope that you found it in several of our different slides throughout the day. And so remember that hope appears sometimes when we least expect it. And so may God go with us. May God guide our feet. May God hold our hand. And may God stand with us each day and every day. Amen.